Rob is the 13th president of Bellarmine and the first to be an alumnus. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Rob Otterelli, class of 1982 and our president. Markets, 
and challenges to societal self-perceptions continue to be felt. The competition and the future collaborators for our Bellarmine students today are not necessarily studying across town at Stadium or Wilson, or even in New York or Boston. They're studying in Shanghai, they're studying in Mumbai or Jakarta. Technological transformations, and I'm talking here about fundamental shifts in how people relate to one another, changes in how we generate, manage, store, and use information, advances in biological and medical sciences that will create tremendous ethical challenges around questions of when life begins, when it ends, and indeed how we even define what it is. Advances in other sciences that will continue to deepen our understanding of the universe and raise existential questions, which depending on how we deal with them will have fundamental implications for our understanding of what it means to be human, and how we express that understanding in our lives and in the society we construct. These will be quite literally questions of life and death. And then there are political and economic transformations. And you probably know there's a sort of cottage industry in the last few decades about studying societal collapses and how, how environments evolve and exploring the concept of diminishing returns on social complexity. I don't want to get too buzzword, but you know, obviously as societies become more and more complex to try and solve the challenges in front of them, at a certain point, those added layers of complexity begin to give back less and less actual return. Um, so it makes societies less resilient to deal with complicated problems. I am still talking about the future, not current events, but uh, and I don't think it's very hard to see some of those challenges are, are realities. Anyway, continued and accelerated economic disparity, breakdowns in political discourse, fundamentalism across the ideological spectrum, these will continue to challenge us, if not worsen in the decades ahead. And we're all engaged in confronting uh, this sort of natural tendency of ordered systems towards disorder. The second law of thermodynamics, for those of you who emerged from uh, successfully from physics. So perhaps this is a pretty heavy topic for breakfast. Nevertheless, I don't apologize for it. The science fiction writer Robert Heinlein, who was no mean futurist himself, once wrote, uh, quote, one should not attend even the end of the world without a good breakfast first. <laughs> and I think that's very sound advice. So rather, I think, I think though, that this, this little trip through the future sets the stage well for what we're really here to participate in today, which is the work of building a development that is prepared for and answers these challenges. And do not by any means present a bleak future of unremitting challenge. It's easier, it's often more entertaining to spin out the dark sort of scenarios. Utopian visions of movies about uniforms don't usually do as well at the box offices as the end of the world sort of negative. But we must never lose sight of the fact that ours is a hopeful faith, rich with the promise of the ultimate victory we are assured of. And it is, and it must be, places like Bellarmine that give voice and body and expression to that hope. And to do this, I think a future vision of development must include some of the following traits. First, a development that's accessible and affordable to any qualified student, regardless of financial situation, socioeconomic background. Continued generous support from our community and leaders like yourself will always be a part of that. The vital also will be managing our costs responsibly, planning our financial commitments carefully, and above all, growing our endowment to a point where we can sincerely reassure prospective students and families that if they're qualified and committed to coming to development, we will make sure that financial concerns do not threaten that dream. I think we also need a development that functions as a center of Catholic education, learning, and thought for the greater Tacoma area. To succeed, to succeed and thrive in the world of the future, we cannot be content to let the world come to us. We must be prepared to go out into the world to act proactively, to shape it, to truly fulfill the evangelizing mission so vital to the church and the commitment to faith and action so integral to the Jesuit way of proceeding. Bellarmine should be a source of strength, aid, and cooperation with the grade schools, both public and private, that we draw on for our students. It should be a resource for parishes and families to seeking to reinforce and deepen the faith they seek to impart to their children. It should be an apostolic witness to the gospel message, continuing the work of Christ to transform those, all those that he knew into followers and disciples who carried on the will of the Father. We do all of these things now. We must seek to do them better. 
and strive to ensure that in the face of many other challenges that will no doubt rise to demand our attention, that these things remain the core, the visible core of what we do and what we're about. My vision encompasses a development that serves as a constructive, stabilizing role in our society and culture by educating leaders who will inherit that world of tomorrow, with all its challenges and its opportunities. A place that educates with a premium on critical thinking, rational argument, constructive dialogue, and social problem solving infused with a Catholic spirit and a Christian worldview. To face the ethical, philosophical, and social challenges we know are coming, we must educate and prepare our young men and women in faith and in knowledge. We must uphold the highest academic standards and refuse to compromise them, whatever outside pressures may make such compromise seem convenient or necessary or expedient. I'm committed also to a development that is international in scope and vision, that leverages the amazing network of Jesuit schools around the world, as well as our unique location on the West Coast in a port city of one of the most trade dependent and United States in the country, to expand the horizons, experiences, and vision of our students. We must seek to build bridges, exchanging students and faculty, expanding the curriculum and classes that will open the world to our students and our students to the world. Technology can be a great aid for us here, bridging that geographic gap, bringing us into one another's classrooms. In my vision, development must be innovative to survive and thrive in the future open to new ideas, to change, to transformation of itself, even as it seeks to transform others. Education is a field famously slow to embrace change. Historical institutions like Bellarmine are often wary of straying from tried and true formulas that have worked for decades. This resistance, this, some have called the viscosity of history, the tendency of organizations to continue in their old ways as long as they possibly can, we must overcome this. We must continue to adopt and integrate technologies that will improve our ability to educate and transform our students and ourselves. But we will also remain careful not to let the tail wag the dog and be vigilant that technology remains always the servant and not the master of what we do. We must approach new technologies and ideas with an open but discerning mind, with a full understanding of the nation and difference. And the idea of the quantum, so far as or in so much as what works is embraced and what does not is discarded, who's to translate We must at times be at the forefront of change, defining and not reacting to the future, and at other times be a rock, steadfast and stable, holding to the universal truths we hold, an anchor and an inspiration to a community and a world that will need that beacon from time to time. We must also sustain the Jesuit presence at our school and our strong connection to the society. We must continue to develop our relationship with the Archdiocese, with the Church, with the many parishes that we serve. Pope Benedict called the Jesuits to be both at the frontiers and at the heart of the Church. And Bellarmine must be a place that reconciles this seemingly contradictory call, a place that models for others how to be in both places at once, and how this can be done. We also must continue to transform our campus and our physical planet, not out of any sense of self aggrandizement but because we must provide our students with a safe, secure, and up-to-date facility that allows us to deliver our mission efficiently and effectively. We must invest to preserve and extend the life of those buildings still viable to integrate into our vision for the school, but we must also be prepared to replace outdated, inefficient facilities well past their prime, such as our student center and our Jesuit residence at Robert Hall. We must replace them with buildings and facilities we need to provide a 21st century environment, open, collaborative, enhancing the flow of people, ideas, and information. We do not simply replace traditional spaces and arrangements with updated versions. The world is now a classroom. The cloud is now a library. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they are now the social scene, or they probably were 10 minutes ago or something else like that. These are all existing in themselves, but they're dispersed, they're spread out, and Bellarmine is the one place where we bring them all back together, where we connect them all together into a unified whole community for our students. Our vision for a new campus center, I think, is an expression of this new reality. There are a lot of exciting ideas about how this begins at that transformation. The philosopher Engel once famously wrote, the owl of Minerva spreads its wings only at the fall of the Broadly speaking,
see what he means is that wisdom only comes after the fact. The impact and effect of change is only truly understood after it happens. As leaders of development, our job must be to refuse to be dependent. We must anticipate the future. We must be in front of the change and continue together to build development in a way that will continue to serve our community by educating, forming, and indeed transforming the young men and women of all backgrounds into leaders who will guide future generations for the good of all of us and for the greater glory of his name. This is the stewardship that we are all trusted with. All of us here today share that common connection with Bella. Parents, alumni, parents of alumni. In many cases, this relationship spanned many generations. As an alum myself, I feel deeply the sense of tradition, of legacy, of being part of a transformation begun and sustained by the Jesuits almost 100 years ago on what was then an isolated hilltop overlooking a young city. Last night I had the honor of attending the Induction Society for 80 of our most outstanding students into Bellevue's chapter of the National Honor Society. As I met many of these impressive young men and women and their equally impressive and committed parents and families, I was conscious again of how we are all connected across the years with so many who have gone before and the work we must do with so many who will follow after us. Much will change in the years to come. The continuity of our mission, our faith, and our community will continue to connect us across the generations to those things that make Bellarmine the incredible, amazing place and blessing that it is. May God bless us all. May God bless, continue to bless this mighty work of this. Thank you all very much for being here.